Hello, Colette Kemp here with the IFDF PR Committee. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Kevin McKay from Cremation Recycling out of the Chicago area. And Kevin and I are going to have a chat about, um, he's going to help educate us on what cremation facilities should be asking their recycling companies. Welcome, Kevin. How are you today? Hi. I'm doing well, Colette. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Wonderful. So we know that you're going to be at the IFDF uh, annual conference, and we thought it would be a great idea to have a chat and kind of get out ahead of things and help our members to know how to ask more, more educated questions. More people have crematoriums these days. So this is going to be really helpful. So thank you. You're welcome. I agree. It's a great okay. opportunity. Yes. And our first question is, what's the difference between recycling and refining as it relates to the death care profession? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. So um, the, the recycling and refining are two terms that that can get thrown out there and it can be confusing um, to a, a crematory owner or, or really anybody. Um, but, you know, in, in a nutshell, um, recycling as a crematory owner would hear it is essentially the term that is, be is best used to describe the process of taking metal um, that is no longer good for its intended use, a hip prosthetic, for instance, a dental prosthetic. Um, and at that point, the only thing that can, the, or the, the best course for it would be to melt it. Um, in this case, we wanna know exactly what it is. So we assay it, which is to analyze it. Um, and then we're able to determine exactly what the content is. And as it relates to crematories, we can then pay them uh, the value for it. Um, refining it would be the next step uh, beyond that. Um, so if, for instance, a crematory, as they commonly do, will send in a collection of small metals that are left behind after a normal cremation. Um, the, that collection over time will get sent to us as I said, we melt it down, we analyze it uh, or assay it. In that uh, collection of metals, you'll have 20 to 25 different elements, different metals that are contained in there. At that point, we can determine precisely what it is, but to refine it is to then purify it. That's to separate out all those different metals from each other so that you can, if, if for instance, in that bar that we poured out, there are 10 ounces of gold in there, um, you need to filter it out essentially from the other uh, 30 ounces of other metals that are contained in there. Whoever is ultimately going to make new things with it needs to have that pure gold, silver, platinum, palladium, you name it. That's what refining is. Uh, recycling is essentially what, what we do. We do some refining, but as it relates to a crematory, recycling is all they need. Oh, very interesting. And are the rates of return that are paid to the crematory for recycling the best indicator of what value they will receive? Um, so it's, this would, my answer will be very counterintuitive to what you would, you would think. Um, uh, in this day and age as consumers, we definitely like to be able to compare in an instant in the palm of our hands, right? And you just want to see what, what something is going to cost or essentially what somebody's going to charge. And that's all the info you need, right? Uh, well, no. Um, so there are certain situations, recycling is definitely one of them where there's a great deal of trust, um, not only in who you're dealing with, but uh, trust and faith in the process in which they're, they're, they're uh, giving you the results that they're reporting. Um, so to answer your question, no, it isn't. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good, uh, you know, uh, example of a, a way too good to be true sort of deal that is advertised out there, whether it's, you know, a weight loss, uh, uh, you know, campaign that somebody says you'll lose 30 pounds in two weeks. Um, you know, these things just simply aren't true. If somebody is telling you they're going to pay you essentially 99% of the value returned to you, um, you just, as business owners, you just have to ask a simple question. Um, can you operate on 1% gross profit margin? And the answer of course would be no, uh, you can't. So in a lot of cases, uh, you're going to get some uh, recyclers who are going to market and they're 
uh, their their attempt at, at sort of luring that business from you is to give you what looks just like a fantastic deal um, versus somebody else, a competitor might have a, a rate of 90%, for instance, paid back to you. On paper, that doesn't look nearly as good, but it doesn't mean anything until you actually understand how they do business. And um, this is where we often say, and not even often, we always say, get really good comprehensive references ahead of time. Talk to five guys that you know uh, out there who have worked with somebody, ask them why they work with them, ask them what their experience is like, have they been to that com- that recycler's facility? All of these are really good questions. Um, that's your best indicator of what your expectations should be. Mm, I like that. That's great to get references and actually speak to people that have use that service and get feedback directly from them. Yeah. I mean, and the IFDF as a, for instance, is, you know, is a great group for that reason. You know, this is why we're coming down and we want to, you know, network with these folks uh, so much is because we've heard such great things about them, but it's, you know, use that advantage, uh, which is to ask, you know, take the opportunity to ask people, Hey, what's your experience been like? You know, who do you work with and why? If somebody says, this is who I work with and they can't give you any really good reason why, um, that's not a comprehensive reference. That's just saying, this is who I work with. Uh, if they can tell you, oh, I've been to their facility and it's just fantastic. Or, uh, you know, I used to work with this company and this company and these guys got me 10 times more than I was ever getting. You know, th- these are details that are needed for somebody to walk away feeling more informed. Mm, that's great. And then that brings us into also, you know, why is detailed reporting so vital? Yeah. So, you know, we, we take the, um, uh, the, the task of recycling as more than just you're selling us your metal. Um, what you're really doing is asking us to a properly, uh, you know, sort of reallocate this metal into the world, which means recycling is this is going to go from being an old knee or an old dental prosthetic. And it's now going to become at some point, you know, pure, metals, again, they're going to become new things. That's what recycling is. So that needs to be handled properly, number one. Uh, Number two, uh, we're being tasked with the the job of of determining and telling you exactly what this is. You know, you're not just sending us a drum. You're saying, here's a drum. Tell me what this is. Um, So that's why we pride ourselves on our facility where we have, you know, eight furnaces here where, you know, we do the work and we have a full assay lab. These are things that should be mandatory uh, for anybody who's uh, any recycler that somebody's going to use. They should definitely be, uh, you know, vetting them and making sure that they have all these capabilities so that they can give them detailed reporting so that there's some accountability. I could I could bore you with another 10 minutes of of the importance of detailed reporting, but just, you know, sort of, uh, you know, the veneer of it is mm-hmm. you want to have more and in- the more information, the better. Um, uh, don't be left in the dark and uh, expected to ask questions that you don't even know that you should ask. Whereas if you have a lot of questions about numbers or figures that are on a statement is a lot better because you can get clear answers for that. But without that information, in most cases, a crematory owner wouldn't even know to ask. Hmm. So would you say that's the most important thing, uh, having detailed reporting that you can you can view? Um, I, I, I would say it's yes, but, uh, you know, there are, you know, just like four wheels on a car, not not none of them are more important than the other. You know, without all four, you're, you're, you're stuck. So that that's definitely one of uh, the most important, but it goes hand in hand with other things. Um, like transparency, you know, can you go to your recycler's facility? If that's not practical because you can't get away, um, talk to and have really good conversations back to the reference, um, have really good conversations with somebody who has been there. So A, they can just verify that they do actually have that facility. And what was it like? You know, was it a small, uh, you know, garage type thing, or is this a big actual, you know, recycling facility? So being able to ask a lot of questions and get good answers for it is just as important as ultimately getting that good reporting. And that's one of the questions that uh, somebody should be asking. Okay, great. And now is there an effective way to properly compare one recycler from another? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it, every time you send in metal, it's going to vary. It's going to be slightly different. Uh, You should never have, you know, huge peaks and valleys. Um, so I would say, yes, 
the most effective way we have found is if somebody, for instance, takes uh, you know what their sort of normal load would be. If they send off three times a year, don't take just what you have sitting around and send it off to somebody and expect them to really show you what they're capable of. You, you already have an expectation of what you've been receiving the last three or four times you sent in. If you've decided you want to work with a new recycler, well, you may be two months away from actually being able to do that. That's fine. Take those two months or whatever that time frame is. Wait till you have a normal load so that you can really accurately compare. Okay, this was 100 cremations or 200 cremations. The last company got me X this many times in a row for that same amount of cremations. And then I send it to this new company and that's what they got me. I, I would take it a step further. And if you're going to do that, which you should occasionally, um, commit to doing it twice. Uh, you know, just so that you, you have a bigger sample size, uh, you know, and again, that test may take you six months to execute, but um, it, it is a great way to do it. Uh, so to answer your question in short, um, send your normal load to a new recycler. Don't split it up and don't do it too early or too late. Uh, just just try and get it as as close to what you normally send in. Okay, great. And I now have for you, Kevin, I have some questions from our members. Uh, okay. Just a couple. So um, they were they were very eager to hear from you and, you know, curious because obviously they're, you know, they're coming across things themselves in the field. Um, so Good. one one of our members was asking, um, how do you educate the general public about this process? Uh, yeah, sure. So we, we obviously don't, uh, but, you know, as far as how we can tell, um, you know, funeral homes and crematories, what to, what to do, you know, number one, um, obviously it's up to the funeral home. It, I, what I, I, I tend to frame this this way. If I were in their position, um, I would be getting out in front of it. Uh, I can reference an article that I actually wrote a couple of years ago that was published, uh, online and in, uh, I, uh, I'm spacing right now, but, uh, I believe it was the Kate's Boylton, Boylson, magazine um, referencing a story where a, a woman in the general public, you know, went to the funeral home and said, you know, hey, I, I know my uncle, you know, had some gold crowns in his mouth. And the funeral director said, oh, yeah, they just burn up in the in the cremation. Um, well, not only is that not true, uh, but it, it, it looks pretty bad, uh, but it's made even worse when the woman who was asking just happened to be a dental laboratory owner. Um, if there's anyone who is an expert uh, in an area that would know, there's no way that gold ever just burns up in a in a uh, crematory's retort. That was the wrong person to say that to. I know the details of the story because she was a client of ours, and she reached out and said, "I know you guys work with crematories too. Why is this what is this what people are saying?" Um, this was a great example of me saying. Lying is obviously never a, a good option and in business, you know, you might think it's the way of just sort of, you know, uh, skirting the issue, but it, it sets a really bad uh, precedent. Um, so what they should do is just be out in the open. Um, I, I think we, we experience in a lot of cases, funeral homes don't actually want the money or they're, they're very interested in it, but they, they don't want to use it for their own good. They have a number of charities in their community that they want to contribute to. They're excited about contributing to it. They even, they're, they're, they put a team together within the company that, you know, starts to figure out who's going to get this, who's going to get that from soccer teams to hospices, to the church, the food bank, you name it, um, and get out in front of it and tell people, hey, listen, you know, we are mandated to actually recycle this metal as opposed to uh, just throwing it in the garbage. Mm -hmm. uh, but by virtue of that, we get money back every year. And last year, here's what we were able to generate. And here's the good we were able to spread throughout our community. Um, I think you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who would genuinely be, uh, you know, upset with that decision. Again, though, that's my opinion. I, 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 I think if I were in their shoes, that's how I would handle it. Um, you have to increase your odds of what the, what the good responses are going to be to that, you know. Yeah, and I think then everybody feels it takes the discomfort away. And if maybe somebody didn't understand up front, at least they when they do find out that there's money transferring, that it's going to a good cause. I think that's definitely um, good for it's community a positive outreach. Spin. Yeah, good for marketing in a positive way because I know sometimes funeral homes get you know a bad rap uh, with transparency. Um, so yeah. that would be great a great way to have that discussion if they choose to do that. So. 
good advice. Yeah, I, I will take it to just a, a step further, not to you know uh, belabor it, but you know we have some funeral homes or crematories that say, and might even be public about it, that that uh, let people know they apply some uh, of the proceeds to you know equipment upgrades, to maintenance that needs to be done on these, and because of that, they're able to keep their costs down. Um, I, I I think that's certainly justifiable. I don't personally know how that would always be received by the general public. Charity is always good. Um, you may not agree with the charity, but you know the 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 intention is is always from a good place. Uh, whereas you know somebody helping to keep your cost down may not always uh, you know ring true with everybody. So uh, it's definitely an approach. Um, but that's the only other one that I hear besides the, the the one that I referenced initially, which is to essentially just say nothing about it or to say the wrong thing about it, um, mm. that it burns up in the process. It's just not true. Yes. And uh, so I'm sure that that was a awkward conversation, you know, for her coming to, for your client coming to you. And then you yeah, have- I, I ultimately tempered her. I, I, I said, don't bash, you know, uh, the industry because of, you know, what one person said. It was actually ultimately two. She called another one locally who said the same thing, um, uh, oddly enough, or something very similar. And I said, you know, you know, put put the guns away and, and just, you know, hear me on this. This is still new to these guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I'm a Midwesterner, by the way, so everybody's guys. Um, but uh, so uh, I don't mean to to you know, uh, not acknowledge the women out there who are in this profession. But um, but you know this is still new uh, to them. They're still trying to figure out how to navigate it. No, that wasn't the absolute best approach. But uh, was it really malicious? No, it wasn't. It was just they, you know, part of them is they don't want to talk about it. And we're just now. We really are about five six years removed from a time when this wouldn't have been happening. Um, this was somewhat taboo. Me even just talking to somebody at a, at a, at a trade show like the IFDF coming up um, just didn't really happen because um, a lot of crematories didn't want to talk about it. Whereas now uh, through a lot of education, uh, a lot of uh, articles that have been out there and, and things like this, um, it, it opens up and, and I think has made a lot of funeral homeowners and, and crematory owners uh, realize that being just clear and transparent about this is, is the better approach. Mm, that's great. And maybe we can put a link to that article um, in the notes for this video if people wanted to read it. Yep, it's great. It's on our website. Okay. Okay, I'll be sure to add that. So the the last question was also from one of our members and a funeral director. So he's asking, um, are there any environmental dangers? Um, some metals would, and he was asking, it was opinion-based, are some metals best uh, to be kept out of the ground? Um, any environmental dangers they should be aware of? Yeah. So, you know, none of these metals are uh, easily biodegradable, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're just going to sit in the ground for, you know, 50,000 years. So it's, uh, there really are, are two alternatives, you know, um, it's to recycle it or it can wind up in a landfill. That's it. Um, so, you know, uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, if you talked about recycling, uh, you know, you were tree hugging, Prius driver, you know, whereas now, you know, you can be as far to the right as, as, as a lot of, you know, Republicans are and, and realize it just makes good business sense. It doesn't, there's no point in, in taking metal and just throwing it away when you could easily reuse that. Um, so it, it's a lot cheaper to recycle than it is to, to, uh, um, you know, cultivate, you know, new metal and then turn it into what you, you're already halfway there if you just use what's already been, uh, put out there in the world. So, um, to answer that question, no metal is good uh, to go back into the ground. So recycling is is always, from that perspective, the better option, hands down. Which is also why they're mandated to do it. Um, you know, on a federal level, the EPA it's it's Code of Federal Regulation Number Forty CFR Forty, which which uh, says that they are actually required to properly recycle it and not throw it away or bury it in their own cemetery. They're not allowed to do that either. Mm, interesting. Which, which for years they have. And, and I mean, is anybody going to come knocking on their door anytime soon? Probably not. Um, but uh, are they technically supposed to do that? They're not. Okay. Very informative, Kevin, and very educational. So if our members have um, additional questions for you, where can they reach you? 
So our website is a great place to start for some like the article that you talked about. And we have some great videos on there, even about a 10, 11 minute webinar. Um, that's at cremationrecycling.com. Um, my email address is K McKay. So K M C K A Y at cremationrecycling.com. Um, and our phone number's on there. My cell number will be on there as well. Um, and, and people can always text me, call me, uh, email me anytime. I'm, I'm happy to talk to anybody and everybody about this. So. Okay, fantastic. And I do believe that we will also see you at the annual convention in Florida in June. You will. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, the meeting is going to be fantastic. I like to golf, so I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of looking forward to uh, the resort having a couple of golf courses and a golf outing. Um, so yeah, definitely looking forward to that meeting. We've never been there before, but as I said earlier, uh, our excitement uh, is there because we love going to meetings where um, you know we get uh, some forward thinking, you know, business owners. Uh, you know, who we could work with, who who love to ask questions like the ones that were posed to you, um, you know, and we love to answer them and 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 sort of get the uh, uh, get the process going on working with them. So yeah, we're we're really looking forward to being down there uh, near Jacksonville. Okay, Palm Beach, well, I believe it is. Yes, that's right. That's yeah. right. It's, uh, yeah, it's going to be. Uh, you got to get ready for the heat too. <laughs> it's a. Uh... To, I lived in Florida three times, so I know what uh, Florida heat is like. And I was just down there in Tampa a few weeks ago, so it, it's a okay. different kind of heat. So yeah, most definitely. Well, Kevin, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, and uh, you know, we look forward to our members being able to ask you questions in person. I look forward as well. Thanks for having me. Okay, thank you. Thanks.